Good morning, folks, and good news. After this, you don't have to hear me discuss the Mobile Observatory project for a bit. In less than five days, we hit our goal. Now we'll aim higher, quietly. Remember, if you got your name on the observatory, you'll get an email when the campaign ends asking what name you want on there. I'm still getting messages every day saying what name people want, but Kickstarter has a system for this, and you'll get the form in April when the campaign ends. Eyes open for it, and thank you. Now the news. The giant methane lakes of Titan are supposed to be smooth, with no waves. So when a flash of light was captured by Cassini, they figured there must be waves visualized now for the first time. Tough to look at that and be convinced. Perhaps it was like the 2012 Jupiter flash blamed on an asteroid. Article linked for you. Along with what many have been clamoring about the last day. First, five points to the Universe Today website for pulling the physics fanboys back off the rafters on this one. It's an initial finding, not yet reviewed, required a bunch of speculation, and they're still trying to measure that cosmic background from a telescope. Wouldn't you think they'd do this from way up in space with a satellite where Earth couldn't interfere? Perhaps listen to Dr. Robitaille's discussion at this week's conference on why the Earth pollutes that background reading far more than you could have ever imagined. It's partially through his description of a flaw in mainstream science. It's persisted for years and potentially biases all these ground-based results. I'm heading out to the conference tonight. Remember, tomorrow night is free. You gotta pay to see the professors and ex-NASA folks, but opening night with Dave, Wall, and myself is free to all. See you tomorrow. Boys in event mode. One in the area near Sumatra we've been watching, but the second is the machine that just got turned back on. Remember, this was off during their bigger earthquake there days ago. Lighter day in Australia, some Sydney storms only. The next couple of days bring some major rain to a few parts of the coastline. Bit of an unusual locale report. Dozens of homes destroyed by extreme weather in the Philippines. And in Saudi Arabia, they're witnessing an unexpected sandstorm. Europe eyes the convergence now having crested Ireland and still shifting eastward today. In the west, still have some activity off both coastlines, but the major story today is yet another winter storm going to continue trekking through the states. At the southern convergence, we could see some thunderstorms as well. Four inner planets, four magnetic connections bunched up on the sun, although the dotted edge to Mercury's point means it's just around the backside. Looking at the planets from afar, you can see why all the interconnectivity is on the western limb as Earth sees it. Sunspots will start on the right and come across the Earth-facing disk to the incomers. These babies grew and morphed overnight but lack X-flare potential and are departing now to become polar radiation concerns. The big guy up north is a disappointment, completely. Top region to watch for geo-effective CMEs would be the southern incomers. They've got delta potential northern incomer less impressive than I thought it would be. With the growth of those other spots we nearly took an M flare this morning. Solar wind is not much of an issue at the moment, calm space weather and geomagnetic shield. The corona hole facing earth today was poised to ramp the earthquake watch back up but it is of minor power this morning and a bit of a crapshoot. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.